Okay, this is the way I would teach you guys how to study farm for the um, NCLEX. Um, because the NCLEX has changed. You know, really, I think it is a big mistake and a lot of work to try and memorize your 200 top 10 mids. And I also found this, uh, these medical suffixes, medication suffixes, and they don't always work. All right. So let's let me put this down. I'll put it on my free resources page because, of course, like lidocaine will work. Of course, we know that's a, a local anesthetic. And we know that uh, penicillin is an antibiotic. And some of the meds that end in L-I-N-E, like tetracycline, is an um, antibiotic. So sometimes they work and a lot of times they don't. But again, we're talking about the new uh, NCLEX. And the NCLEX has changed. So this is what I would do. Okay, um, I have a, a page here. We never share questions. Okay, we always keep the integrity of the NCLEX intact. But over time, when I was tutoring, people would say, "Oh yeah, I had that med on my NCLEX." So I would know these medications for your NCLEX. Um, you probably won't get them, but just know them. I know Lantus is a very, uh, again, do your own homework and look up the, um, the generic name of these meds because you will not have any more um, uh, brand names. It's all going to be generic. So, and, and you know Lasix is probably going to be on the NCLEX. It's got to be. Okay, we know Lantus is going to be on the NCLEX. We know lithium is going to be. These are common drugs. Look, look, Viagra will probably be on the NCLEX. Zoloft is an antidepressant. Zyrtec is for is an antihistamine for allergies. So see, these are like normal common meds that people have told me were on, were on the NCLEX. Again, it does no good to memorize these, but you know, just know that they may be on the NCLEX. So that's my first step I would do, is I would know these meds, right? It is unclear to me whether the NCLEX gives both names or just a generic name. However, I did find out since then that the NCLEX will only be giving the generic name, okay? So that's why you have to know your generic names here. So go through and do a little extra, do a little homework yourself and find out these generic names. And I would also know maybe one or two, um, well, I have my own uh, concepts about pharmacology, which I will not put in any video because although I should be flattered, I hear that uh, instructors are streaming my videos in the classroom. That's fine. They should ask. But, you know, I'm not going to stop that. Um, also, too, I found um, I have a 20-page e, um, e-booklet on delegation and prioritization. I have no idea who put it up on Amazon, but it's not up on Amazon in America, but it's up on Amazon in um, France, in Indonesia, in Germany, and in Canada. And it's all different prices. I don't know if it's Indonesia or, or, or India because it just said Asia. All right. So somebody's getting the proceeds to those, uh, to my e-booklet or something because I didn't put it there, which is quite surprising. And it's up on Amazon. It's everywhere on Amazon, but in America. So this is why I'm not putting up everything. But I am trying to help you guys, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I also, before I even get started with the real, you know, regular drugs, I you need to know your illegal drugs. Let me make this a little zoom in so you can see it with the camera, right? I think you can see that a little better, right? All right, so here's where I was. So here's your meds that I heard were on the NCLEX. You do your own homework and get the generic name for these, okay? I was starting to, but it's a lot of work. Um, 
Okay, I said it was unclear to me whether you get both names or just the generic name, but the, or the brand name, but I found out you get both. Sorry, I found out you only get the generic name now. So it's going to be, are you going to know your meds? No, you're not. But um, I hope that you get tutoring with me because I have a lot of concepts. And I'll give you some concepts here, but I'm not sharing my concepts, the ones that I do with tutoring. Um, so you also need to know your herbs, your your illegal drugs and your legal drugs. So this was not written by me, but I did, do have it up on my website. As you can see, the title of this is Herbs, Toxicities, and Drug Interactions. I had a, a doctor professor call me months ago and ask me where I got my sources. First of all, my sources, for the most part, come in, in from my own head. Okay, that's why you probably couldn't find them anywhere because they're in my own head. So that that's my source, myself. Okay, she maybe she wanted to give me credit, but I don't know. All I know is I'm finding my stuff all over the internet, and so I have to assume whatever I put on the internet, people will take and um, do whatever they're going to do with it. So these are the gentlemen, the authors that did these um, these uh, me, uh, herbs and wrote this paper here but I edited edited it, it edited it, it <laughs> and I um, added to it okay and of course my name is Annalise Garrison and of course I am caring for you alright so I'm sorry my back hurts I'm gonna go to the doctor tomorrow I think I have kidney stones. I think they went way up in my, way, way up. I think they got pushed up into my kidney. Anyway, I'm, not, this, I'm, I'm doing a tape, hello? Uh, I'm doing a video. So, like, this is what I added. You, got, you ladies and gentlemen, should know about heroin. Uh, you should know about marijuana. I'm not going to click on the links now because, you know, I'm just walking you through how to study. You should cl uh, know about cocaine, and you should know about valerian. Now, speaking about valerian, okay, um, that's that is a herb. Now, let me just get. I'm not really getting sidetracked. I just want to help you out for just one second. A lot of people are talking about how they're getting anxiety and depression. Uh, they get anxious uh, when they take the test. And then if they fail, they get depressed. Okay? So, I heard this on television by one of the um, actors that was, um, I was watching the, the actor's studio. And believe it or not, it was a comedian. And she made a very good point. She said that we, are, uh, we have anxiety because of the things... Uh, that we are thinking about in the future and we have depression for the things that happened in the past so we should live in the moment how how cool is that what a, what a concept and that was from a comedian that was being interviewed uh, uh, on a show called the actor studio you might be familiar with that I wish I could remember her name she's really funny She's skinny. She's got black hair. It's really funny. But anyway, and she's so right. We have anxiety about the future, and we have depression about the past. Hence, we should live in the moment. So, so many students say that they're not good test takers, and they feel confused, depressed, and hurt when they fail. The NCLEX. Truth is, so many of us feel this way every day. But we, we have to work past these feelings of hurt and self-doubt and anxiety and come back to our true selves. Everything will be fine when the time is right. Please listen to each of these meditation MP3s each morning. Okay? Anxiety and depression is a learned behavior, which, by the way, I suffer from. Okay? 
so you can you can and I'm working on it myself you can also do things that calm you down by using your senses for example meditation was one of them right but lavender is supposed to be a calming scent so use lavender soap lavender shampoo um, lavender bubble bath whatever you want to do you can light a lavender candle you can go for a calming walk you can drink chamomile tea chamomile tea is supposed to be soothing very common among Chinese and Japanese yes and then some people as I did go to their local health food store and buy what is called valerian root now I have um, sorry I actually have this stuff called valerian hops Okay, that's why I took you here for just a minute because I, I, you need to know herbs for the NCLEX. Valerian root is what they make from Valium, okay, um, what they make Valium from, and hops is the substance that they put in beer, okay. Now, if you decide to go this route, test it out first. You don't want to go to the NCLEX without your faculties, you want to be sharp. But relaxed and any any of these CNS meds okay central nervous system meds people act differently on different medications so make sure that you're sharp but relaxed if you decide to get your valerian hops at your local health food store okay um, as mentioned anxiety and depression is a learned behavior so you have to listen to these mp3s which I put down here on a daily basis okay um, you can't just listen to them one time and then go take your NCLEX meditation is a learned behavior okay um, anxiety is a learned behavior that ta you have to actually deprogram yourself from anxiety and depression which I am still working on it and it's been take and it's been and it has been taking years okay so I know you don't have years but at least once you find out about this you know um, read your Bible or your spiritual book or do breathing and meditation exercises every day and this way relaxing will become second nature to you when you go to take the test for the NCLEX you see now here's a short video three minute video it's just it's just music with some picture changes okay uh, what is his name Herb Ernst very popular alternative um, uh, musician he's actually on the music channel on on your TV sometimes he he gave me all of his CDs because I helped his wife pass the NCLEX and he gave me permission to use um, the uh, his his um, CDs as I see fit so I'm using Herb H E R B Herb Ernst as the backup um, um, for this meditation CD I also uh, mp3 I also have um, positive affirmations it's about 45 minutes long okay because I don't want to push a uh, scripture on you and I like the King James Version anyway and you might want to do both but I really this is not trying to like be religious on you this is trying to get you just to relax just to relax and to reinforce that you're a good person you know and that you could pass the NCLEX and as far as the scripture verses goes there's Bible verses like God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so you know I, I made one for everybody and I don't care if you're Muslim Catholic evangelical Christian it makes no difference everyone is welcome to listen to these mp3s I'm not trying to push anything on you what I'm trying to do is calmness okay because I tutor people from all over the world all over the world it's been a great pleasure so I got a little off track there because I wanted to talk about uh, the Valerian 
okay it's supposed to calm you down it's used for anxiety sleep disorders you know but like I said don't get all you know make sure that you have your faculties test it out before you go because everybody acts differently if you decide to go that route okay and it may be on the NCLEX uh, again chamomile I mentioned that we'll go over that okay um, let's go over this now this all of the rest of these was put up by these authors here they have so many initials behind their name I don't even know what they are <laughs> okay I, I really don't think initials are important I think that behind your name is important I think it becomes rather confusing and sometimes intimidating but again that's my opinion and it's not part of this uh, presentation so chamomile is often used in the form of tea as a sedative I already said that right and then here's some reactions you guys can you know read the reactions because uh, oftentimes when we take intake or assessment we forget to ask do you take any herbs okay we always ask do you smoke do you drink do you do drugs but we forget about the herbs all right so you know here's some reactions you can read um, again this is on my free resource page um, and it's caringforyou.net forward slash herbs dot html okay but again it, you can find it on my free resources page okay okay now echinacea what is echinacea well echinacea uh, is used to boost the body's ability to fight off infection that's pretty cool again um, people react differently to herbs uh, St. John's warts for example I was taking St. John's warts for depression anxiety and I was um, having trouble sleeping many of you have depression anxiety and sleep disorders when you take the NCLEX so you would think one would think I'm gonna go take the NCLEX let me get some St. John wort but let me tell you something when I used St. John wort um, it it had me all jittery it had me it did the opposite effect that's why I'm saying if you're gonna go the herbal route with the calmness uh, or the depression um, make sure you know you t start out small and follow the directions but if you feel anything different like I felt j jittery and oh here it is right here st. John warts can also cause headache dizziness sweating agitation well, that's what I mean by jittery right when used in combination with um, serotonin uptake inhibitor uh, medications such as Prozac and Paxil these are antidepressants but I wasn't using these meds I was just using st. John warts and I felt this way so be very careful be very careful take it slow okay garlic we, garlic is used to lower blood pressure and cholesterol we know that right and again here are some reactions you can have to garlic I love garlic um, so my cholesterol is almost where it's supposed to be there is another um, cholesterol herb that I take let me see what I call it it's called phytosterol P-H-Y-T-O-S-T-E-R-O-L phytosterol complex I'm taking this for my uh, cholesterol as well I don't if I can help it I try not to take um, a lot of medications because I do take Ativan for anxiety and Lexapro for depression and, and, and you know doctors they just love to throw meds at you so I need to be careful I don't want to die <laughs> you know uh, being over medicated although my back is hurting and I, I see they want to give um, me uh, oxycontin for my back I think it is kidney stones I think that they never got rid of the kidney stones and they it got pushed up further in into 
because uh, it's the top of my kidney. I don't think that Oxycontin is going to help the top of my kidney. You know, there's something there. There's something wrong. So, as I mentioned, doctors accidentally or purposely maybe over medicate, and these how the, and this is how these real drugs get on the street. You know, people sell their Xanax. People sell their Oxycontin because because when you give a person pain pills, you or even or even. Um, Lexapro or even Xanax, you're really masking what the problem is. They're not really getting to the root of the problem, you know. So, but anyway, that's a different story for a different day. Now, look at fever few. Okay, most most commonly used for migraine headaches. I have never had migraine headaches, but. I, I know some people that have. Now, this would be interesting if I did have migraine headaches to see if that worked. But don't be taking herbs just to be taking them. Again, you could be mixing your herbs and hurting yourself. You know? I'm just telling you, you have to know herbs for the NCLEX, too. Now, here's your Ginkgo Bilo Ginkgo Bilo Biloba. Ginkgo biloba. Now, what a lot of uh, students use this to improve their thinking while they're studying. I never did. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Just be careful, okay? Because when you read this page, you can see how it reacts with uh, Advil, Aleve, Motrin. You know. So be careful when you take herbs, and it's also important to get the client tell you what herbs they take right ginseng ginseng is good all right um, and that's for to stimulate your ad adrenal gland and thereby increase in um, energy now I eat a little ginseng in my food but I don't really take it for and the last thing I need is more energy <laughs> so be careful all right that's all I'm saying just be careful and again these herbs may be on the NCLEX. Ginger. Ginger is good. All right. It's been used to treat nausea and bowel spasms. Let me tell you something about ginger real quick. Um, I love to, to drink ginger ale, probably to my detriment. Maybe I drink too many because they're like, what, 140 calories a can? I'm trying to slow down and drink that sparkling water. But let me just tell you, Canada Dry has um, 50 milligrams of sodium that is a lot of sodium in this can of Canada dry and then I was looking at the regular store bought the cheap stuff the 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 brand the store brand it had no sodium in it so if you guys like ginger ale and it tastes the same buy the cheap Buy the cheap ginger ale. It has no look. Look at the label. It probably won't have sodium in it, and that's good. You know, you want to try and eat as um, healthy as possible. And then there, the last oh, saw pimento. Okay, the men use that for uh, their enlarged prostate. Okay, you can read more. I'm just going quickly through. Okay, and then um, and then women do is is the equivalent. Black cohosh is is a natural way to treat menopausal symptoms, which I th well I got estrogen replacement pills, um, but I'm I might get this as well. I'm 49 years old and I'm not so sure I'm not going through menopause. But again, another story for another day. Thank you, Garrison. <laughs> okay, so know your herbs. All right, know your herbs. All right, so we did that. Um, okay, I was doing a video series here. You know, I was going to make eight of them. And I need to tell you guys, um, this is not the way the NCLEX is working anymore. So I quit doing it. And I mentioned it here on my website. Truth be told, I do not know when I'm going to finish the video series. Actually, I'm not, okay, because I found out a better way to study for the um, NCLEX. Because it is a slow process. This is what I would recommend. I am of the uh, opinion we live in a capitalistic society. 
if it does not make money for the pharmaceutical companies, then it has less of a chance of being on the NCLEX. That's my opinion, and I'm going to tell you why I'm even saying this, all right? Because it seems to be coming out of left field right now, but just listen, right? However, this is not always the case. Lots of meds listed above, okay, these meds here, lots of meds listed above are not on the list. I am about to tell you, I am about to tell you, uh, are not on the list that I'm about to tell you about. It's on WebMD, okay? I'll show you that. So these meds you should know for, so what meds should you know for the NCLEX? Okay, know the meds listed above or any other meds other people may post in their comments, okay? Again, do not share NCLEX questions, but if you remember a med you had, it's okay to write it in a comment. Um, because it's just a med. We're not sharing questions. Um, start writing down medications that you see on TV commercials. Okay? And this is what I'm talking about. Know the top 10 most prescribed medications and know the top 10 best selling medications. There is such a thing. Okay? And then you can watch my YouTube videos, but I never really finish them. So, um, but it doesn't hurt to watch them. You know, every little bit helps. Now, um, this I just go on to explain that um, as of November 14th, we're on. We're all going to get just the um, generic names. So we're not going to know all the meds. So that's why when I tutor, I give a lot of great concepts. Uh, again, I'm not going to put them here because people stream things in the classroom and take my stuff for their reviews and everything. So I, I don't want, it's mine. And I have to share it, for, I have to save it for my tutorees. So here is what I tell people that I tutor. Don't worry about memorizing the top 200 meds. Impossible, right? Don't worry about what exactly the med is, whether it's a beta 1, I meant to say beta 2 here whether it's a beta 1, a beta 2, a calcium channel blocker. Uh, again, the, I don't think the NCLEX cares anymore. Just know that it is a heart med. It's not that they don't care. It's just that that's not the way it works anymore. I, I, you're, you don't need to know it. You know? I mean, I've been helping thousands and thousands and thousands of people with their NCLEX, not just in America, but Canada and all over the world because they're coming to America. And for example, you could take your NCLEX in, Hong, in, uh, in the Philippines. You could take your NCLEX in Hong Kong, I believe. And then, uh, I believe. And then America has a bunch of territories, which I didn't know. But if you want to know, just go to my, um, uh, board of nursing page. Go to the site map and go to my board of nursing page. I had no idea America had all, a whole bunch of territories. So, and you can take your NCLEX in any of those territories, which was interesting. So, um, so do know what the med is for and then take it from there. Okay, like group your med together. Is it a painkiller? Is it a cholesterol lowering med? Is it a blood pressure med? Is it a thyroid med? Is it a is it a chest pain blood pressure med? Is it an acid? Is it an antibiotic? Is it a diabetic med? Is it an antidiuretic? Is it a blood thinner? Is it an asthma, asthmatic med? Is it a psych med? Is it a, is it a, an anemic med? By the way, you take vitamin B for anemia, but I guess you take other meds too, and you know just etc. All right, that's the way I want you to know your your meds. Don't worry about the specifics of that med. Just know whether it's cholesterol, breathing, that type of thing, right? And I'm going to go to WebMD and show you. Um, and I just wanted to tell you that every 10 years, the pharmaceutical companies do a study, and they tell you the top 10 most prescribed meds and the top 10 best-selling meds which I tell people that I tutor, but now I'm telling you because I'm making a video, right? But one thing is for sure, know the generic names of the common meds, not the brand name. You will have generic names now, all right? Now here, I have to update my site. 
Uh, I don't believe that is the right link because I found uh, the updated version. You see, this is WebMD. And it says 2015, and the other one said 2014, right? So, um, so anyway, so here's the 10, the 10 most prescribed and top selling medications. If I was to take the NCLEX today, this is what I would study. This is what I would focus on. Okay? So, if we scroll down, I hope you can see it. You want me to make it a little bigger? Uh, I'll make it a little bigger for you if I can because I know when you watch these videos it's hard to see alright so the top 10 medications by number of monthly prescriptions now this was put out in 2015 okay so they must have did a new one um, Humira is getting to be a big one alright it treats uh, arthritis and Crohn's disease again it won't be Humira on the NCLEX and please don't correct my um, um, do not correct my uh, pronunciation of these meds I know I'm going to butcher them <laughs> but if you want to say something constructive um, other than me pronouncing the meds um, please go ahead good or bad I don't have a problem I can take constructive criticism so it's not going to be Humira. It's going to be called, uh, here we go, Adalimumab. Oh, man. I, I don't even know if I got that right. That's why I want to make it closer so you can see it. So when you click on that, well, I just told you Humira is for arthritis. Uh, so, but if you don't know a med, sometimes M WebMD does give you, now subcutaneous means under the skin, right? So this medication will, re oh, uh, come on website, can you please, can you please cooperate? All right. This medication is used to reduce pain and swelling due to certain types of arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis, cirrhotic, uh, cirrhotic arthritis. You know, you get cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, sorry, you get psoriasis. Now, sometimes psoriasis is caused by inflammation of your, um, of your joints. Um, let me just tell you real quick because it was in my tutoring, um, there's five different types of psoriasis. No psoriasis is contagious, including pustular psoriasis. I had all the psoriasis written out for my tutors, and then I accidentally deleted it. But I think what you need to know for the NCLEX is just know that no psoriasis is contagious. Not pretty, but not contagious. Okay? And this, the, I actually know somebody who's an, who has ankylosing spondylitis. Their their spine is like real curved, and and it's very painful. I don't know why he's not taking Humira. He only takes um, uh, a leaf. Maybe I should um, tell him about it. And it's also used for uh, uh, to to treat Crohn's disease which of course I think that disease might be on the NCLEX and ulcerative colitis you guys should know your like core nursing stuff alright uh, you should no matter what just know all your core nursing stuff I'm just helping you right now with giving you some ideas about pharmacology and I'm very sorry that I cannot give you my concepts about pharmacology but everybody's taking my stuff at will and I just can't have that happen all right so I'm sorry about that if, if you want to know my concepts uh, sign up for some tutoring okay so look at this the top 10 medications uh, sorry the web page keeps 
hopping around. The top 10 medications by number of monthly prescriptions. Synthroid. We know what Synthroid's about. Again, it's not going to be Synthroid. It's going to be this levothyroxine, right? Um, 21.5 million sales. I mean, prescription. 21.5 million prescriptions. I would venture to guess that might be on the NCLEX. Um, Crestor. Again, not going to be Crestor. It's going to be Rosuvastatin. Rosuvastatin. Now, this is what I have a problem with when we do uh, suffixes. Because if we look down and find the statin, well, actually, this one is correct. Statin is an anti-hyperlipidemic. Uh, uh, anti okay? So that means that it does lower uh, your cholesterol. So I will put this little list um, up on this pa on my page so that you can see it for free. So, but 21.4 million prescriptions in the year 2015 thus far. That's because of our diet, okay? Look at albuterol, which is Ventolin, you know, the inhaler. 18.2. That's because of where we are an industrial country and we're polluting the air. I, that's... Again, my opinion, but I mean, what else could it be? You know, you got your emissions from the gas, and get, what does what does cars put out? CO two, carbon monoxide. So of course we're gonna have trouble breathing, right? Look at Nexium. We all know what Nexium is. We know that, but we're not gonna have Nexium. We're gonna have again. Don't don't dislike me because I can't pronounce these words. Esomeprozole. Now we know that Nexium is for heartburn, right? Now look, that ends with an O L E. So let's look at our list here. O L E. We you, we know that Nexium is not an antifungal. So see, I the it doesn't always work. But sometimes it does. That's why I'm going to put it up on the on the site for you to see. Now we know the Advair discus. We know what that is. It's a little uh, purple and white circular. Um, I don't know why it's circular, but it works. You know, but it's not going to be called Advair. It's going to be called uh, f fluticasone. Fluticasone. All right, 13.7, 13.7 prescriptions. Wow, right? Now, Lantus, not going to be called Lantus. It might be, it probably will actually, but they might throw it in as insulin glargine. All right. Now, I have no idea what this, the, Oh yes, I do. This V Med V of uh, Viv Vivance. Guess what this is for? If I'm correct, this is to um, help with uh, hepatitis C. We didn't used to have a um, we didn't used to have a cure for that. But I was. Let me just make sure I'm right and telling you the right story before I go off on a tangent. Again, you're not going to have that med. You're going to have lisdexamine feed, fet, fetamine. Lisdexamphetamine. Well, let's see. Let's see. That's M I N E. M I N E. Do we have an M I N E here, or just a I N E? Okay. That is an alkaloid. It it has a very very um, diverse and important uh, physiological effect on humans and animals. Well known alkaloids are include morphine, strychnine, which is poison, quinine, uh, ephedrine, nicotine, and caffeine. Believe it or not, so. 
nicotine and caffeine are addictive. As much as the these morphine and strychnine, well, nobody will. I hope nobody will take strychnine. The only reason you want strychnine is if you want to kill something. But let me see if I was right about the hepatitis C. If not, it was still a true story. I just got the wrong med. <laughs> Let me see. Because I got kind of excited about it when I heard it. Ah! Uh, okay. It's not used to treat um, hepatitis C. It's used to for adult attention deficit disorder. Okay? Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Okay? That's what it's for. So, of course, it's going to have a very profound effect on the individual okay um, so lisdexamphetamine is for adult attention deficit disorder it's one of the newer meds again I th think the end uh, the end clicks just changed recently and even if they didn't uh, they don't always switch out all 3,000 questions okay they you know so sometimes you see old meds in there you can't you know it must be hard to uh, keep up with the NCLEX and keep it fresh you know year after year after year you know and and every time there's a repeat test taker supposedly they don't know you're a repeat test taker and you get a different um, you get a different uh, test so but it is still from a pool of three um, three thousand questions okay but ten point four million prescriptions were prescribed for this okay that's a lot now Lyrica we've all we've all we've all n heard of Lyrica on the television right ten million prescriptions okay what is Lyrica for guys you see it on TV all the time. Anybody remember? Well, I'll tell you. The the generic name, and you must know the generic name. It's not Lyrica. It's Pregabalin. I'm going to say Pregabalin. Just try your best. Okay? Um, because when you go to work, other people will say the med correctly, like maybe the doctor, and then you'll learn off of them. But don't learn don't learn the correct um, pronunciation from me. I'm just trying to help you study. All right. So Lyrica is pretty cool because um, it helps. It's used to treat uh, pain caused by nerve damage due to diabetes or shingles or fibromyalgia. Okay. And it's also used with other medications like Tegretol to treat types of seizures. Not the grand mal seizures, but like these partial onset seizures or like focal seizures where the person just stops talking and is looking at you. That's it. And you're thinking, hey, Annie, Annalise, are you okay? Yeah, sometimes you can't even see a focal seizure. You know, you don't realize they're having a seizure. Now, you realize when they're having a grand mal seizure, but there's different types of seizures, too, th speaking about that. So, but then again, that's core nursing. So look it up. I'm teaching you about a little bit about pharmacology and how to make it easier for you. And then we have Spiriva. We've heard a lot about that on the, um, on the um, commercials, right? Um, and also Exalto, but that's not here. So that's a blood thinner. But that's not on this list. I'm sticking to the list. So 9.6 million prescriptions of, of Spiriva. Isn't that amazing? And this one here is a new med. The one under it. Uh, let me go show you a little bit about Spiriva. Because you hear it on the commercial all the time. But we don't really pay attention. Again, it's not going to be called Spiriva on your NCLEX. It's going to be called, here we go, Tiotropium, Tiotropium Bromide. Okay? And that 
we all know is used for you know breathing